Hello guys, DeathDroid88 back here again. I decided to look at all the settings for my mic and I figured that out. So sound should be a little bit louder now. I um, actually found this game here. Um, found it sitting in my room here. We're going to play Mortal Cities Children of the Nile. This will be the first episode so I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. The game that I was going to go with, uh, we're going to play a campaign believe we can choose a game here where we can build yep we'll build a great pyramid so we'll start out with that one the two It'll just tell us here and we'll proceed now the cool thing I like about this game is it's pretty uh it's it's different um, you sort of have to just sort of um, control everyone, and I can sort of show you how it works. Um, when we get in the game, it's easier to describe it when I'm actually seeing what I'm doing instead of waiting for it to load. Um, but it's actually a pretty cool game. Um, so you start out, um, essentially what you're trying to do, if we go all the way over this way, um, we can see... Yep, so we got little um, limestone quarry here. And then we'll have to import the actual uh, fine limestone, because when you build a pyramid, you need two different types of limestone. All right, so we'll start. First thing you always got to do in this game, you always have to place down, I believe it's the palace, because that'll allow you to start playing the game. You don't always have to do it this way, um, but th this essentially just allows you some extra tax income. And essentially, you're trying to um, keep control of the amount of food along with the amount of goods and everything like that. All right, so these are going to be like our growing lands down here and this area will flood a little bit sometimes so we'll want to put this a little bit more up this way. So we'll start out with that right there and then they'll have to build this and essentially the first year the entire goal for us is to um, get farms up and running and get some basic shops up and running. And you can see here we'll, ha we'll have different seasons. The flood is when uh, the Nile floods. Um, then there's a planting season and harvesting season. Usually the best time to add any type of um, shops or jobs like those are usually right around um, like the end of harvest season so that they have enough time to replace people. Um, as you see we have villagers here too and these are essentially just the basic people that um, live with you. And those guys, they'll take up, they'll start out with the peasant jobs, um, and then they'll move up the chain slowly as you need them. Alright, the other thing I like about this game, you can actually build, um, you can build roads and stuff for completely free. And some people do use them, not everyone does though. But, it, this is just to show you how it runs and everything. Um, temples are the other things you want to get running right away, but you have to get uh, the brick maker and brick layer going along with the baker. Those are the three main ones because the brick maker makes a brick for all the government bu government buildings. The brick layer builds all those buildings and then the baker supplies all your government workers with food. So how I do it, I sort of do an up class and I sort of do like a middle class and then these are all the peasants that live through here. And we actually got... it's not too bad of an area here. Usually you try and find where the big floodplains are. So like here wouldn't be a bad place to put farms at. And I think we'll start farmers up here. And this tells you the amount of farms we can have. As the nobles upgrade their palaces and stuff, um, you'll be able to add on more farms and all that. So the first thing is going to be getting basic shops up and going. So we're going to want to do a couple common shopkeepers here. And R is the rotate button. Do one, two, three, four. And what we can do here is if you hit the clear land, we can actually get rid of those. So then we're going to make sure these go all the right way. And then we'll sort of build a plaza around these guys. And the other thing to try and keep in mind too is when you get these shops it usually takes them some time before they're going to get any goods of any type. So usually you want to keep that in mind too. 
And I usually try and get these up right away because then you make the palace happier. And that'll just help out because then you don't have to deal with all of that. With the uh, nobles getting mad at all. And then the next thing we're going to go with, we're going to put a little farmer community down here because now we can handle up to six different farms. And as you can see, the waters start to recede. So where it shows the yellow, that's floodplain. So we're actually going to just build four farms right in here. We're going to go one, two, three, four, and we're actually going to do six of these. So then we're going to start out with building some roads around here. That'll just upgrade what they currently have. And then this can just sort of show you how the communities go. You can also plow the peasant homes out of the way and make room for more farms and stuff. And then I always try and make sure I throw a couple uh, basic shops up here too. Because how it usually goes is you start out with like farmers and servants, and then they move up to like the middle class, and then they move into like the craftsman jobs. Alright, so we'll do four common shops here. And if you right click, you can actually choose them and tell them what they're going to make. So usually I want to try and have one of each because then uh, you just have all the goods that the farmers are going to need. So you see these guys here, and you can see what they're doing. And then you can see new farmers are on the way, so that'll help out a lot. Um, eventually we'll want to get scribes to maximize food, but for now we're pretty good. Alright, so we got the main farming area here. If we click on the map, this is where all the shopkeepers are at. See, we don't have a lower class right now, so we don't really have anyone that can move in there. And then a lot of this stuff here, you can eventually get rid of it, but I just leave it for now. Because see now, the farmers are going to start trying to grow fields here, and then usually they'll move between um, planting and harvest. So you see this guy, he'll start building another farm, and then we'll be good to go. And then it's just sort of watching everything. And then these little green boxes here, that actually tells you how happy people are. And you never want those to go red because then you have tons of people move out of that profession. And then these are also, you have the amount of bricks you have, and then you also have the amount of food stored. Um, so you can see all this here. And then we also have other things like cedar, leather, all that kind of stuff. And you can make weapons too, but in this in this one we don't really need weapons at all. May build a wall around the pyramid at some point, but not don't really need it at all. You'll see these guys that slowly harvest food. And then you can see here this is where they assess the taxes at. And this helps out a lot because then if you have all the taxes assessed, you get tons of food and you'll never run out of food. And that's that always seems to be the issue that gets me is I run out of food very quickly. And we'll want to build some farms down here eventually, so we'll sort of bring the farms down this way so then they have more area to fertilize. And we're waiting on another farmer. Um, these guys are all planting. And we'll just let that go. If you click here, this will tell you the amount of uh, occupied workers, and then Prestige is also what allows you to have more workers. It's so like tombs, propaganda, and then like if you go to the world map, you can see different things too. Usually I try and build a lot of tombs right away, because that will help out a lot, um, with at least improving everything. Then I always try to surround the palace at least, um, just so that they have uh, plenty of room. So then you can tell essentially that's where the palace is, and then you can build nobles around that. And then we may actually want to move this in here at some point, so we may have to just destroy the palace, bring it back. Because that probably would not be a bad idea. Because the other thing you can do too is you can build up noble houses here. And we should probably. Yeah, we can build them like right up here. And then we can make this the main city up here. So if we add in like a noble there, we'll start to begin to show where the roads are going to go. And yeah, it's going to be like right there. 
And then eventually one of the peasants or one of the builders are going to come build this for us. And then we'll have a, another noble here, and that'll be four more farms. Alright, so it's, it's showing you here that they want more types of luxury goods. And at some point these homes will become occupied. And then someone should be over here soon to build this up. There we go. And you'll see this guy's just a regular villager, but he's building that up for us. And then a mo noble will move in from off map, and then we'll be good to go. And then they'll slowly, they'll improve by themselves, but you can improve the palace if you have the extra food and everything. And usually that's what I like to do. And as you see, six farms isn't a lot of food, but they'll keep planting for a little while. And then these guys may eventually move into some of the other houses. And then this should get constructed here soon. I usually try and build these all together and then start the town. This probably would not be a bad area to throw the town in. Then you can see the game sort of auto-saves automatically. That's just one thing it likes to do every now and then. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to turn that off yet, but we'll get there one of these days. Um, the other cool thing you can do too is you can actually build boats, like luxury boats, and then that'll help out with the nobles um, improving their wealth. Roads. And we'll connect this guy up with the main village here. And that's essentially just a road to tell us, hey, go this way to get here. That's the main reason I put those in. And then we could probably throw a couple shops here, or maybe um, like a couple uh, granaries, which store the food for us. But we need some uh, workers first, so we'll do couple of brick makers. We'll do a couple of brick layers. We'll give one space there. Then we'll just sort of build a road off of that. And then the other thing to keep in mind with the brick layers and stuff, you want to keep them within range, or at least the brick makers within range of any type of papyrus or any type of reeds and then any type of clay because that's what they use to make the bricks. So instead of having them all the way back there and running these massive loads here, I'll just leave them right here usually. And then as you can see we can build different things up here. Great pyramids, yeah they're massive compared to everything else. But you can even build these to very small pyramids and these can be like tombs for some of the elite. But you always want to make sure that you have a tomb before your pharaoh dies or else you get a lot of negative uh, prestige for it and then you can lose people due to that but as of right now we don't really have to worry about that we only have six farms maximum at some point someone will move in here and then we'll probably want to throw a couple more common shops in here two three four and we'll, then we can just run the road off of that and I just sort of like building a city like that, because then it slowly grows. We're all building up up here. So we'll want to get rid of all of these, and all of these, and then the farmers will eventually get to it. So then if we just start to destroy all of this stuff, we'll move the palace down that way a little bit. And we'll wait for the noble to move in because he's the one that determines all the uh, supply and or he'll he'll be the one that will alleviate a little bit of the farms there and then we'll actually throw we'll actually determine what we want these guys to sell and at some point when our farms grow here we'll want to add in more shops this way but for right now we got a couple shops down here oh, zoomed in a little bit too much there you can actually click on this and it'll show you what's for sale no one really has anything since they're all gathering supplies right now. And as you see, we still got 209 villagers, so we still got a lot of people to deal with. 
I'll probably throw the palace like right here and then we'll sort of build the city this way. That seems like the best way to go about it. And then at some point we'll expand this way probably. And then we'll eventually build the pyramids over here. And as you see, new people are on the way. They'll build their own houses. And then see, the farmers always have to move up. So it always has to be lower class that moves up and moves in. Updates with a noble. Well, destroy that. And we will come down here. Put the palace in. Right there. And someone will build the palace here. I usually try and keep these all together. And the other thing we're going to need with that too. We will want a baker, because they're the ones that give out all the food for everything. So we'll go back into roads here, we'll bring this around, so then we can just sort of tell us. Town's starting to form here a little oh, bit. No big deal. At least I don't need government bits. And then we'll expand this so that we can add in two more bricklayers eventually, because those will be, after these guys start making a lot, those will be what they are looking for. These guys are looking to move up. So then, just run the path right there. I want to say that's too wide. So now we can start moving into luxury shops. You need, because there's six different types of luxury goods, and then there's four different types of st the. Uh, common goods, so you'll always want to have six of these uh, luxury good places and then set them all to different ones so then you can determine what they are going to build. The other thing we'll add in right now, since we have the chance, we'll add in a couple more farmers because the palace will move in here quickly. And this is the part where I normally plow like that guy down and then I put a farmer in there. We can just sort of pass or what these are showing here. And usually I'll do those as pass for now. And it just sort of represents what part of town is what part of town. So there are those being built. And then as the farmers don't have jobs, as you see they already gathered all the food already. So then you got this down here. This is the amount of food we got. Not a lot, but it's some. The palace is almost done again. The bakery should be getting going here soon. If you see these guys... Yep, this guy's gonna go get that. We should probably build a cannery down here. And as you see, the shops are just sort of moving. They move around a lot, so... There's that. Do a road around here. And as town upgrades, usually that's when I try and make them upgrade and look a little bit better. But for now, we just need some basic roads in here. So we got a noble here, um, which they are wanting more types of all goods. So that'll hopefully get up here soon. And then we got these guys over here. There are other shops. And they got a couple things for sale, which is good. No linens aren't any good, but they'll work. There's going to be a guy coming down here soon with bricks, and he'll get that all taken care of. Now the other thing we can look at too is we should see what else we got. Yep, so that's the old family. And then we also got coal, which is what they, they, they use for perfume. Um, we got more coal. Sometimes they give us um, different sites, like we may have a gold mine or something, but I haven't seen one. Normally a lot of this stuff, at least when you're building the pyramids, has to be imported. So usually that's what I do, is import a lot of it. And we're just sort of going to survey the land, see what we got. Right. Yeah, so 
these are all just sort of rocks, so nothing's really any resource. We've got a lot of trees, but they don't really use trees for much of anything. More villagers down here. And here's that good floodplain that we're looking for. So now we got one graduate, which they're the guys that can move up into the educated jobs, so that's like the priests and stuff. So have these guys, these guys should be... Spirit is crossed to yep. Osiris. So now that we just lost a pharaoh, there's nowhere to bury him. The events will be negative. So now we got second pharaoh in here. And you see the guy there with the bricks. And these guys are building up some bricks, which is always good. You can almost never have enough of these guys, but I, usually I start slow with them, just so then they have enough time uh, to build up. Uh, at least like a bakery and then a gannery. Yep, so there's a gannery. We'll build one of those right there. And we want road. So we'll throw that in here. And there we go. So we got the got a gannery coming, we got a bakery on the way. So this will give our government people food. Sometimes you'll see they'll be complaining about stuff. But these guys all seem to be good. Usually it's the higher, the upper class that you have more issues with, because they can never have enough stuff. So now we got bricks heading to the site, but they don't have any more bricks really ready. And it should show here that we have Baker moving in soon. There we go. And here comes the auto save again. have any food set up there. So maybe we want to add in... Nah, we don't need a barge landing yet. Cargo drop-off point might not be bad. But as you see, we have like little shrines and stuff. Usually I start out with just the regular size temple because that'll make people happy. And then sometimes you can move on to the massive temples if you feel like it. I usually throw one of those by the uh, tombs. It just makes it look a little bit nicer. You can also do guards and stuff, because sometimes when you start importing stuff, people get mad that you have foreigners there, and the foreigners, they'll say that the foreigners steal stuff. But yeah, this is pretty much how it's going to go. And then now we're pretty much just trying to build up for now, until we can get enough uh, food built up, because food is essentially money in this game. And then you also have bricks, because... Bricks and food are the two main resources you deal with, and then you also have limestone, you have tin, copper, gold, cedar, emeralds, um, basalt is pretty good, and then you can make uh, statues out of that, and that'll add to prestige too. But as you can see, sometimes you can see, it's not giving us anything negative yet, but you can see sometimes people will complain here. Usually I'll try and do a priest initially and educate more people, because the educated come from like the nobles' houses. So you don't have one of anything, but you got a lot of food. So usually the first two or three uh, elite I get are going to be the uh, priests. Um, then I'll probably make a scribe or two. And then the overseer is what we need to uh, mine the limestone over there. Alright guys, well that's the end of the first episode here. Um, we'll pick up here next time. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Um, like like the video, um, comment on it if you like it, and then also subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.